everybody, this is Nate, doing another P1K in central New Mexico. Uh, that is a peak of 1,000 feet or more of prominence. Um, it's not really a proper peak, it's more of just a very tall mesa, but uh, it's kind of cool. It's kind of the types of peaks I've been doing lately with this very wet winter we've been getting. I have not really wanted to drive too far outside of Santa Fe and also uh, to get into the high country would be kind of brutal right now. Even the low country is kind of tough. But so right now we're starting off just on an easy, uh, it's not really a road, but it's, you can tell a lot of cows walk around here. So it's pretty flat and uh, spiny vegetation free. I did read a few trip reports online and that contributed to me thinking that this was a okay to hike. And yeah, so we're gonna head to the base of the Mesa then work our way up. I don't think it'll be a technical climb at all, but um, at least like a thousand feet of elevation gain. All right, I found that uh, I have my best performance and endurance post-injury when I kind of stop every hour or so, just manually stretch out my ankle, get the weight off it for a little bit. Uh, so that's what I'm doing now. Beautiful views from up here. I can see most of the mountain ranges in central New Mexico that are, you know, that would be in view of this peak, you know, the Sandias, the Ortiz, the mountains near Santa Fe, the Jemez, uh, great views. I can see the Truchas group sticking out a little bit in the distance. Um, it's been a great hike so far. This route is definitely excellent. Um, it's surprisingly a little bit exposed, nothing dangerous, and I haven't really scrambled or anything, but uh, yeah, it's definitely like you look off to one side and you're like, this is a pretty far drop into this canyon here, then there really wouldn't be anything to stop you. There's not much of, a, of an angle there. Um, yeah, it's been a, like I said, it's been a good hike so far. Uh, we're kind of in the Ojito Wilderness area. Last time I was here was to hike Cabazon Peak, which is the other P1K in this area. Maybe one of three if you count Cerro Alesna. But, um, and then the Ojito, last time I was in this specific area um, was to backpack in the Ojito Wilderness like th almost three years ago now, which was like right, I think it was maybe even the last backing, backpacking trip before my son was born. Uh, cool little backpacking trip over there in the Ojito Wilderness. So yeah, I mean, that's basically what we're looking at right now. As you do more off-trail hiking, you really get an eye for certain things. Uh, for one, like like I said, this is off-trail. There's definitely not a human trail here, but look at how good this looks. I mean, I've seen real trails that are in worse shape than this. And my best guess is that this is some uh, game trail. I've seen a ton of deer prints, or maybe they're elk prints. And so they must be heading up and down this corridor, but it makes, for excellent hiking for me. Okay, for a bit of hubris, following that track, I wasn't paying attention. It took me much farther south than I wanted to go. And the track I was supposed to follow kind of cuts east, I think, I think up this slope, which looks more gradual. And while rocky, the rocks are big, look pretty easy to step on like stairs and takes me up. Instead, I'm kind of on this looser, brushier slope. I thought about trying to make my way over there, 
but I think they'd be pretty hard without going down significantly. Um, just because it gets really steep right in this gully that you can't really see. Uh, I don't think we'll have an issue going up this way, but I'll probably want to go down that way. Okay, as you can see, we have topped out on the Mesa. That was a pretty wild detour we took there. I forgot to mention that um, I did actually lose GPS signal on my GPS. Uh, my phone still had signal. So I kind of knew where I was and knew that I was far away from the route and kind of had to work my way up the Mesa. To be honest, the GPS on my phone didn't really help much in that regard, but uh, I, don't, I won't have a track for my ascent anyway, but you know, it was uh, surprisingly technical uh, at first, definitely some class two scrambles. And then at the, at the end, uh, yeah, definitely like a class two scramble at the very end. Nothing, again, nothing like dangerous, I would say, but you know, it still exists. And I wasn't expecting it, but I figured, you know, whenever you climb mesas, you kind of expect like, maybe when you get to the top, there might be some light scrambling. Uh, yeah, you could definitely tell we're near the Ojito because I can hear all the high-powered rifle shots in the distance. There's a lot of BLM land near the Ojito where people go target shooting. Um, so yeah, we're going to definitely make sure that we hit the uh, route that I saw on the way back because there's no mention of scrambling there. And uh, really the scrambling wouldn't be as bad, uh, but the like steepness was pretty rough. So. Uh, definitely a different route would be preferred. We're on a two track right now. Definitely looks barely used. And we're basically working our way towards the Mesa, much like Las Mesas del Conjolón. There is going to be a little bump at the top that we can climb up to really truly be at the high point of the Mesa. Actually, right when I finished that statement, I looked left and realized that's the high point of the Mesa. So we're just gonna travel overland here. I've also not mentioned that um, there's another trip report that talks about this mountain and basically says there's like untold numbers of spiny plants. And that is definitely true. This reminds me a lot of uh, my Cerro Bonanza hike where it's just like nothing but pincushion cacti that look almost indistinguishable from the surrounding grass. So it's kind of why like this two track was really appealing, but uh, it doesn't really go to the peak. It kind of just goes around the peak. So I think at this point it makes sense to just uh, head straight to the summit. Here's the official survey mark. But for what it's worth, that rock looks higher.
we're heading down now. Cool summit. Um, kind of like Las Mesas del Canjolón where uh, the hike itself wasn't the most thrilling just because it's, you know, it's just a, a small mesa somewhere. Uh, one thing I'm a little concerned about is that uh, I've been doing all these P1Ks that are within a two hour drive of my home and uh, I'm starting to run out of ones that don't have significant access issues. So uh, this is, it's not the most fun predicament to be in because you might see me doing uh, less prominent peaks, uh, but we'll see. Hopefully it starts getting warmer, some snow starts melting and uh, we start getting into the high country. Thanks for joining me, head back to the car. One thing that's starting to happening, or one thing that's starting to happen is that the uh, the mud, the dirt was, you know, it's, it's actually been raining a lot. I planned on uh, hiking this peak like two days ago on, a, on Friday and just, we've gotten so much rain and snow that I figured, you know, I don't really want to deal with the roads in rough, muddy conditions. I'm going to wait a few days for it to dry. And uh, it is very muddy now. It was not this muddy at all on my way up. I figure what's happened is the dirt has melted and now it's muddy. And I'm hoping that this doesn't give me, give me any issues when I'm getting out here in my vehicle. All right, it looks like I'm back on some kind of uh, game trail or something. Uh, I don't know if that route was any better and my ascent kind of sucked. Uh, very steep, very loose, but I think now we're past the worst of it. Okay, I don't know how I'm screwing this route up. I did lose GPS signal again, so it must be something about this area, but I tried to traverse this area and there's two Kind of like rock side areas, one over there and one right there, and both of them gave me huge problems. Um, I slipped and fell on one of them, thankfully, was able to catch myself on the other one. I also had some issues, nothing that bad or that scary, but yeah, this is really not that fun. So, hopefully, that's the last of what we hit. But I would definitely say, if you do this mountain, my ascent, I mean, granted, I might not be following this track very well, but my ascent, I think, was definitely much safer than this. Well, I think what made this return trip so difficult because that was really bad. I mean, that was one of the sketchiest experiences I've ever had, just sliding down. And really it was just because I was able to slide off to one direction and grab onto something that I was, that I slowed myself down appreciably. Uh, I think what's happening and what's making this descent so difficult is just everything you see around you is mud. Like obviously the rocks aren't mud, and, but like all the dirt just like is giving because it's like, just the, you know, the almost the driest mud you can get. And it's making everything so loose and give so easily. And uh, on my ascent, it was all frozen. So now I'm, now that it's, you know, warmer out, all this moisture is melted and it's just brutalizing me. But like I said, I, I can say with certainty that we are at, we are well past the hard part now. So now it's just uh, getting down and being grateful that, uh, there were no accidents coming down that way because that was tough up there. 